Well, hey, hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Mr. Perry. Here we are in Unit 8, Lesson 2, and today we are going to learn how to traverse a two-dimensional array. And uh, in order to know how to traverse a two-dimensional array, as you'll see, we're going to be using a lot of nested loops. So let's do a quick review on nested loops. Here you have a loop, um, uh, uh, two loops actually, and a print statement on the inside here. So as always, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video. I'm gonna ask you to look this over and see if you can figure out what this is going to print when you go ahead and run this uh, algorithm. So I'll go ahead and let you do that right now. All right, I'm assuming that you paused the video and you started working this out. So let's go ahead and see how we trace this through. So this is what ends up uh, printing when you run this particular uh, nested loop and this print statement. So hopefully this was what you were looking at. And what we need to understand is that um, when you have a nested loop, you have what's called your outer loop, which is this one right here. And then you have your inner loop, which is this one right here. And uh, the outer loop, which is controlled by the variable i, is going to iterate from zero all the way up to three, because it's as long as it's less than or equal to three. Um, and then each time i iterates, every single time your outer loop iterates, the inner loop controlled by j is going to iterate from zero all the way up to four because this is long it says as long as it's less than uh, five so when i is zero j is going to go from zero up to four so up here you can see this is when i is zero and then here's where j goes from uh, zero to four and then um, once that completes you go back into your outer loop and i goes up to one and when i is 1, again, j is going to iterate from 0 all the way up to 4. And uh, once that completes, you go back into your outer loop, and uh, the i iterates again and goes up to 2. Um, and then j uh, iterates the entire time. And then finally, i goes up to 3, and j iterates the whole time again. So it's important, before we get into um, two-dimensional arrays and how to traverse them, it's important to just remind ourselves of how nested for loops work. And uh, hopefully this was beneficial for you. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a standard um, two by two, uh, two dimensional array of strings. And right now uh, we have a two dimensional array of strings uh, called names, and it is storing uh, Sam and Cat in our first row, and then Dice and Goomer in our second row. So pretty standard, pretty easy one uh, to get into. Uh, we have to remember that you have rows versus columns when you're dealing with uh, two-dimensional arrays. So, um, sorry, let's back that up. So you've got um, two rows um, identified in this uh, initializer list. This is your first row, that's your second row. And obviously each row is gonna have two columns um, because of course you've got two elements in each. And um, we also have uh, this method called length. And um, we need to remember that if we call names.length, that's gonna tell us how many rows are in this two-dimensional array. Um, but if you say uh, names at zero.length, what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell you the um, length of an individual row. Um, and so this is row zero, and as you can see, row zero has two elements in it. So this is gonna tell you how many columns are gonna be in that two-dimensional array. And again, this is just really important syntax to keep in mind as you're moving forward in this lesson, that uh, if you have an array um, called names and you uh, call a, a na uh, names.length, this is gonna tell you how many rows that you're gonna get. Um, but if you say names at zero.length, this is telling you how many columns uh, that you're gonna get. And uh, so let's go ahead and look at how would we do um, nested for loops? How would, you, how would we use nested for loops to traverse this array? So uh, you're gonna start with your outer for loop and the outer for loop is gonna traverse all of your rows. So you would say for int row equals zero, as long as row is less than names.length because we're gonna uh, traverse the number of rows here. Um, and then row plus plus. Uh, from there, you are going to do your inner for loop. Now the inner for loop needs to traverse all of the columns. So um, this nested for loop is gonna say for int call equals zero, as long as call is less than names at zero dot length, because again, now we need to traverse the columns um, and then call plus plus. And now what we need to do, again, this is slightly different from what we've seen before, 
we need some print statements. We need to access each one of these elements. So let's say you wanted to print all of the elements. Um, usually what you would want to do is you, want to, you would want to print one row and then print the next row on a new line and then print the next row on a new line. So we need to make a couple of adjustments in how we do this. So first off, um, inside your inner loop, you're going to do a system.out.print statement, not a print lines, print ln, but just a print statement. And what you would do is you would uh, print the element, um, you know, names at, you know, row and then at call. And then you would add just a space. You would concatenate a space to it. Now, what this is going to do is this, this is going to uh, print Sam and then a space and then cat and then a space. Um, and then when it's done, when it, when it traverses the entire inner loop, before you traverse your outer loop, you want to add a um, system.out.println uh, statement. And this is going to tell it to skip to the next line each time you encounter a new row. So again, this is different syntax from what we've used before, and it's important to take note of how this works. All right, so that would go through, and this is what's called row major traversal. What it means is we are traversing the rows first before we traverse the columns. And, um, you know, this is going to basically um, represent the two-dimensional array as we would expect to see it. We would expect to see Sam and then Cat, and then we would ex expect to see Dice and then Goomer on a, uh, on a new line, which is what we see down here. So this is the standard way to traverse and to print all items in a two-dimensional array. And again, we call this row major traversal. But we can actually change this, and we can do um, a we can uh, traverse um, and print things in a different way. Because sometimes you don't want to print uh, from side to side. Sometimes you want to print up and down. You actually want to print the columns, um, uh, you know, column one and then column two and then column three. So um, this is called column major traversal. And um, the way you set it up is you would traverse your columns first. So for int col equals zero, as long as col is less than names at zero dot length, col plus plus. And then for the inner loop, you would traverse your rows. So then you would, you would add, all right, let's traverse our rows um, on the inside here. Um, and so this means when you're at column zero, you're now going to traverse row zero, row one, row two, row three. So that's what's going to go through and get, you know, do more of a, a vertical um, uh, traversal here. So you would, in your inner loop, you would traverse all of your rows. And then, like before, um, you're going to do your print statement. Um, the print would be on the inside. And again, this is just a print statement, um, not a print line statement. Um, and we are printing names at row, col, plus, and then a space. So this will print each element in each column. And then um, between the curly braces for your inner and your outer loop, you would add a print ln statement. And this is going to skip to the next line um, each time the print statement encounters a new column. And um, once this is done, this is going to print Sam and then Dice. And then it's going to print Cat and then Goomer. So you can see this is printing um, in you know, a horizontal way. Um, it's printing the columns. It's printing column zero, Sam and then Dice. And then it goes to a new line and it prints column one, which is Cat and then Goomer. Um, so this is the most common alternate way to traverse a two-dimensional array, and again, we call this column major traversal. Now, your uh, AP exam also wants you to be familiar with how to traverse a 2D array using enhanced for loops. And um, so enhanced for loops, again, they're a little bit different as far as their syntax is concerned, um, but they're not too tough. Um, they're very similar to um, what we did with uh, uh, your standard for loops. So if you had that same two-dimensional array of names, the first thing you would want to do is you would want to traverse your rows. So uh, first we need to traverse each row of the array. Now those are one-dimensional array of strings. So we would do it as for each one-dimensional array of strings, which we're going to call row. And then we would have the colon, and um, this is in our 2D array um, called names. So again, the way I read this is for each one-dimensional array, um, which I'm calling row, in my two-dimensional array of names, 
And then what we want to do now is for every name, which is a string that is in this row. So again, for each string name, um, which is contained in my row, which was referenced in that previous um, enhanced for loop. So again, now we need to traverse each element in, um, in each column. And again, the elements, of course, are strings. So we set up the enhanced for loop to traverse for each row, for each string, you know, called the name in our one dimensional array called a uh, row. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, print our name um, and again, add our space. Um, and then like, like before, uh, outside our, our inner for loop, um, but, but contained in our outer for loop, that's when we would have our print ln statement. So it's very similar in its construction, but the adjustment that you need to make um, in order to make these enhanced for loops takes a little bit of, of getting used to. And um, enhanced for loops can only traverse a, a 2D array in row major order. Um, so like in unit six, enhanced for loops cannot be used to change any element of the array. Um, and you cannot traverse uh, using um, uh, doing column major. So this is, Again, enhanced for loops are, you know, slightly um, more condensed syntax, but still a little bit limited in terms of what they offer. All right, so now that you're familiar with how to traverse a two-dimensional array, um, you're gonna start applying many of the same algorithms that we used in unit six for one-dimensional arrays. So we're gonna start learning, you know, how do you traverse a 2D array and find the min as well as the max, or maybe the shortest and longest string. Um, you're going to be calculating the average. Uh, you'll be learning how to do a linear search. So again, a lot of the similar kind of algorithms that we did in Unit 6, we're going to see where, that we also apply them to two-dimensional arrays. But we just need to change up our syntax so that it's um, representing a two-dimensional array. All right. So with that, you are good to go. You can start looking at your CS Awesome uh, activities for uh, Lesson 2 or you can check the 2D Array Activities document for alternate 2D Array practice. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in class.